You must be very clever to read Chinese. Oh, I'm just playing it safe. Who knows, they might win. Size. It's amazing, Mr. Shirdoff, how modest you Russians are. In private. That is because we have just learned from our Chinese friends the value of keeping face in public. Fortunately, that isn't all you've learned from the Chinese. We've given this operation the code name Minotaur. He was the watchdog of the inner secrets, wasn't he? Precisely so. Good morning, General. I assume it's morning outside, anyway. Any signal at all? Plenty of signal, but also plenty of noise. Our setup is just too damn potent. We're getting noise from all over the universe. Ah, uh, don't be discouraged. Half a billion classified federal dollars can't be wrong. Not to speak of our British contribution, about two pounds ten, I should think. Where is it? Do we have a fix? About two hundred and... Ten miles south southwest of Hong Kong. Uh. Let's hear the bad news. Although I guess it's good morning to you fellows. You're listening. I sincerely hope. I'd be upset if you weren't. Now, there's not much to report. Um, I assume I'm being watched. I'm certainly taking every precaution to see that I am. Coming into China openly this way, via Hong Kong, with an American passport stamp not valid for China. It's hard on the nerves. I think it'd be more restful to drop in by parachute. Just getting the peaks, the points of high energy, the dentalizations, DTs, etc. You made a suggestion at our last conference. Yes, fill in the gaps with uniform white noise. Nobody thought much of the idea. Including me, but let's try it. The, uh... Stewardess is being very, very attentive, which may signify a great deal, or it may simply signify that I'm a very attractive fellow. rather crowded this time of year. I hope you have a hotel reservation. Oh, I booked into the King Edward. Is that all right with you? Very famous hotel. Very British, but very good. <laughs> Finra. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. This is Dr. Hathaway in London. Washington? Yes. Hello, Mr. Vice President. How are you, sir? Yes, I'm calling from London. Something rather disturbing has come up. I've had a letter from Professor Sung Lee. He's an old colleague and teacher of mine. We're in the same field. He went back to China about 10 years ago, and I haven't heard from him since. Now he writes, telling me that it will be impossible for me to visit him, which is peculiar because I made no such request. All right, then. I'll wait to hear from the embassy. Dr. Hathaway, would you come with me, please? I'm Susan Wright, the ambassador's secretary. He'd like you to take up your problem with the military attache. Is that all right? Suppose I don't have much choice. Well, 
Charles Shelby. No matter how I try, I end up talking to you. It wasn't my choice, believe me. Still, I've got nothing against you personally. You're a brilliant man. Thank you. You're just the wrong brilliant man for this job. What job? I've got a job. I know all about it. You've renewed for another year. Very attractive woman. Then I suppose you saw my letter from Professor Sue. It was shouted across my desk. Well, what did you find? A good grade of rice paper made in Shantung. A letter after 10 years of silence, General, means something. Could be. Squares with the Russian information, which is generally reliable and generally too late. So they can play their game, both sides against the middle. Shelby, I want this understood. I'm out of the game. Out. My orders are to change your mind. Oh, Dr. Hathaway. Sherto. Alexander Sherto. Well, Sherto, the last time I saw you was at a cocktail party in Warsaw. You were uh, then introduced to me as Lieutenant General in the Soviet Tank Corps. Correct. I see he's been promoted to agricultural advisor. General Shertoff has some disagreeable film he wants to show us. Yes, taken by some friends on holiday in China. But now, Dr. Hathaway, watch the top of the picture. What do you think is this? Wheat. Growing in the midst of hot, wet, tropical Chinese jungle. Now you are going to see some pictures taken in the former country of uh, Tibet. We found a farm, a pineapple farm. Pineapples, Dr. Hathaway, growing in ice and snow at an altitude of 17,600 feet. Obviously, the Chinese are developing an enzyme, some sort of growth regulator that completely erases the effect of climate. They can grow any crops anywhere in any season. The Chinese can simply hold out this little magic gem in the undeveloped countries, Asia, Africa, South America, 90% yeah. starving, 90% peasant will crawl all the way to Peking to get it. Hathaway, all we want is a good sample of that enzyme. Yes, yeah, sure, why not? It's all so easy. Walk into China, mouthful of international goodwill, locate the laboratory, grab the goodies and out. Fast guns blazing in both hands. I've got a simple alternative. Name my two kids Chinese. Now look, General, we want the molecular structure. That's perfectly true. But it's in three dimensions, just a little bit complicated. A single molecule of that enzyme may have as few as 3,000 atoms or as many as 400,000. That can't be memorized, not even by myself. That's just as true for your Chinese professor as it is for you. He has to have it done in black and white, on paper, on film, whatever. And our instructions are to get it, any way we can. I'm sorry. I could do it three years ago. I can't anymore. Good. I've seen your memorandum. You disagree with our Far East policy. Well, so do I. I'm a bigoted, narrow, America first patriot. So we're on different sides of the same stalemate. Well, there is something else, something you don't know. Is that possible? I lost my wife three years ago. You know, I read the entry in your record. These things happen. Oh, no, no, you can't put this on a piece of microfilm. She was killed in an accident. I was driving. She was dead in five minutes. Those five minutes made me twice as old as I was. But I came out of it with a pathological respect for life. I can't undertake any job that might oblige me to kill. Good, we agree. You're the wrong man. Oh, incidentally, you have an appointment call in three, no, two minutes, with the President of the United States. Do you want me to call him off? Bourbon? Scotch. Hathaway. I didn't vote for him, but I had to admit that he just possibly might be right. 
And yet all he said was, uh, Dr. Hathaway, sir, I wouldn't be talking and you wouldn't be listening if this were not a job of the most urgent and terrifying importance. After that, I, uh, well, I thanked him, I hung up and found that I'd forgotten to say no. So, here I am, General. Treat me gently, I'm a little more sensitive than I used to be. Look, Hathaway, this is not a friendly job. Russia's helping us, up to a point. China's a lot simpler. China just doesn't like us. However, you may get lucky and they won't let you in. But if they do, it's because they need you, and pretty desperately. Apparently, they process a whole square mile of a Chinese weed, and all they get is enough crystals to cover the tip of my thumb. So they need some simple way of constructing their enzyme out of common materials, and that's your business, isn't it? I assume they didn't give you the prize for political idiocy. No, you're the expert they need. So I must tell you this. There's a good chance you'll never get out. However, you've got a remedy for that, too. What's that? Aspirin. And this is our current Q23 transmitter, made of plastic. Same density as human flesh. Therefore, she'd be quite impossible to detect. Meanwhile, anything you say, and also anything said to you, will be transmitted to London. Beautiful. In other words, I'm a walking bug. However, you have an effective range of only 110 miles. So you've got to be picked up, scrambled, and rebroadcast. Two weeks before you go, we're going to put a satellite in the sky over China. The ingenuity of man, a little lower than the angels. Now, where does this thing go? In my belt? Shoes? Sunglasses? No, it's to be implanted in the mastoid sinus of your skull. What? Good. You want to quit? I'd be stupid if I didn't. I'm stupid. Dear Dr. Hathaway, you have my profound sympathy. I know. It's an international trap. My government or your government may decide at some moment to change sides. End of Hathaway. You want my personal advice? Stay home. Thank you. Now, what's your official advice? Our heroic Russian intelligence has placed a man inside China. He is of great importance, so do not contact him. If you are in trouble, and I mean serious trouble, he will come to you and he will give his name. So read. Memorize. Shang Shu. Shang Shu. Shang Shu. This model is slightly enlarged. It is, in fact, one billion times larger than the actual size of this molecule. And yet, with the aid of X-rays, we can see this molecule of living matter. Well, here's our visiting professor, Dr. Hathaway. Only 20 minutes late. I was just trying to explain to our students how to get a Nobel Prize. Start as you did. With air and water, dead carbon. Spend 20 years of your life in a foul laboratory and create life. Sometimes I try to imagine you as a dark and dazzling child. Were you anything like my students? IQ 150 plus? Oh, who knew? Who cared? No one paid much attention. I know I didn't. And then, uh, as soon as I could walk, I rushed out in the middle of the street and became a bum. <laughs> Maybe you're still a bum emotionally. Okay. I won't be visiting your class next month. Why not? Going away. For how long? Only three or four weeks. But you may not come back. What makes you say a thing like that? Stupid instinct. You're going to China, aren't you? Stupid instinct. Well, not entirely. There's a letter in your pocket which I find I can't read. <laughs> you read my mail. I'd read your mind if you'd let me. It was from one of my old teachers. In fact, Half of my work stems from his last American paper. He should have won the prize instead of me. Great man. He's in a bit of trouble. And you're going to China to help him? Don't. It'll only make things worse. Okay. Don't be so tragic about everything. Do you want to know the real problem? No. It's very simple. I love you. And you don't love me. And the problem is... 
It doesn't matter. It did the first time. It doesn't anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes' time, we will be landing at Kai Tak Airport. Would you please ensure that your seatbelts are fastened securely and that all cigarettes are extinguished? And what are you watching right here? Is body condition? Yes. This is a recent British invention. A very sensitive transducer is planted in the appropriate place inside the body. It can then read off pulse rate, diameter of temporal artery, adrenaline per unit volume. And this one? That's a computer summary of his current physiological status. Anger, fear, or sickness or extreme pain, physical or psychological. Dials also read on these uh, monitors. landed at Hong Kong. We hope you have enjoyed your flight with us and that we will have the pleasure of your company again. in China has now spilled over into Hong Kong. It began with grievances by the local labor force alleging poor working conditions and violence by a European engineer. When it appeared that these dissatisfactions could not be settled, sit-down demonstrations and protest meetings began. The police were called in to disperse the demonstrators, a move that unfortunately led to violence. When the police tried to break up the demonstrations and made arrests, charges yes. of illegal violence were held against them. Just a moment. In this melee outside of local factory... Yes. Is this Dr. Hathaway? Yes, this is John Hathaway. My name is Yin. Mr. Yin? Will you be kind enough to meet me at the Kylo Kilopo? Yes. Please come immediately. Yes, I will. What's the address? 26 High Fong Road. <laughs> Sir, the name literally translated means House of Elegant Pleasure. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Would you like to come with me, please? Yes, thank you. You're Mr. Hathaway? How did you get? Mr. Yin was kind enough to show me your most recent photograph. That's strange. I don't remember presenting one to him. Ah, it is one of the problems of being famous. Our cook, too, is famous. I can see why. And what is your famous name? Ting Ling. That's very melodious. Thank you. Where is Mr. Yin? We have two floors. He is on number three. Part of the management. Precisely no. Would you care to play? No, no. I am told he is a chief in the security forces of the People's Republic of China. And he'd like me to know that. Some of the most exotic people in the world gather here. As our honored guest, all the women here are available to you. You may enjoy any form of entertainment you wish. Do you want to be introduced? Some other time. 
Majesty, he instructed that the People's Republic of China will pay for anything that pleases you. Very considerate. This is a famous play, Slave Girl at Peking. Wonderful performance, do you agree? Almost real. Almost. You see how the slave girl walks in a circle, only to be sold at the end to the highest bidder. Is it the end of her life? Or the beginning? Mr. Yin is in his room. That's his door up there. Please, when you come down, ask for me. You bet. Come in. Mr. Yin? Yes, please sit down. In China, as you possibly know, the host himself comes to the gate to greet his guest. Especially if he wishes to teach him a lesson. You presented me with a carnival of decay, which I take it represents your conception of the Western world. Yu Te, Chi Ping Te, Wu Hui Te. Rich, sick, and filthy. While this bowl of plain boiled rice represents your country. We simply wanted to show you the difference between China yesterday and China today. And between you and us? Yes. Hopefully, your visa will soon be granted. As the first American in China in a very long time, you will be a great celebrity particularly as you are so tall. I call the night manager. He promises to repair this problem first thing in the morning. Oh. Everybody in Hong Kong is so terribly kind. It's beginning to grate on my nerves. Yes, but you'll feel much better very soon. You didn't come to me, so I had to come to you. I buy 200 butterflies fresh every evening. So, when I entertain, the slightest movement, they fly. But if you're very quiet, they come down and brush you with their wings and settle down on your skin. Excuse me. No. Just for a moment. Last service. Push him. Push him. Oh, I know him. He would talk, but he can't. He has no tongue. Call the switchboard. Get the police. No. At least they're too expensive. Do what I tell you.
Mr. Hathaway, sir. Ah, uh, who are you? The night manager. You are troubled, sir? Trouble? No, no, no. What makes you say a thing like that? Just that I've been beaten and robbed. That's a terrible thing for King Edward Hotel. What did you lose? Oh, I lost my belt. Mr. Hathaway, sir. Well, my shoes, anyway. These, sir? Perhaps you were enjoying yourself last night. The pleasure of our city can make you forget. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Is everything all right now? Oh, yes. Good night, sir. Mr. Yin must be worn out. He has been busy. Feeding me, photographing me, inspecting me, and examining me. He'd cut me open if he could. And maybe he will yet. But you were right. They want me in China. Real bad. So bad, I wonder if they'll let me out again. Well, maybe it's all for the best. If they offer me a nice lab and a full professorship, who knows, I may even change sides and join their little team. Very fine. Oh, and Shelby, send a cable for me, will you? From Milan, Italy, to Professor K. Hanna, London University. Having fun. Wish you were her. <laughs> Good night. Latest hot flash. They're moving fast. They just woke me to tell me that my visa has been graciously granted. I take a Chinese plane to Chengdu in two hours. your beautiful mother. Not I. I'm just an ugly chemist. I read your recent paper on peptides. I thought it was brilliant for a woman. Oh, I agree. But my father helped a great deal. I'm very anxious to see him. He's gone far away, to the country. Oh, I see. To renew his contact with the rural masses. Very logical. Honored by your presence, Dr. Hathaway, and we are most anxious to show you our revolutionary new China card. Please, accept these small tokens of our esteem. is the most treasured prize in China, Dr. Hathaway. When a youngster is given the armband, he takes on a new responsibility. Mao Zi Xi Wan Xi. Mao Zi Xi Wan Xi. 
Marcus, they want say. As a young red guard, he will instruct and guide others of his age. He is now a new leader of our revolution, protecting China from the outworn thinking of the old line intellectuals. Shing to 11.30 p.m. I think they're trying to kill me with kindness. Fruit, flowers, and the Red Guards Coral Society. I've seen three schools, two restaurants, and a zoo. No action on the professor. He's off in the country somewhere, renewing his contact with the rural... Oh, yes, you heard that. No sign of the trap yet. I have to walk right up and put my nose on the cheese. Come in, Mr. Yin. You expected me. How gratifying. These young people are the Red Guard, Dr. Hathaway. They are the true children of the chairman, the vanguard of the peasant masses. For your benefit, Dr. Hathaway, the Red Guards are saying, the thoughts of the chairman will enrich the harvest. The chairman stands shoulder to shoulder with each of you who tills the soil. One must study while one works. For the strength of China lies in an enlightened peasantry. While you work, you must think, for it is only by constant study and constant work that China will rebuild itself. elaborate way to go to jail. Perhaps you will be disappointed. You are going to visit the most important person in the history of the human race. Gosh, I wonder who that could be. Success. So far. <laughs> Which reminds me, General, there's an utterly mad rumor going around. It's not true. That there's a coil of explosive wire wrapped around this transmitter. Which we can explode when necessary. chairman come off into this part of the country? You may remember the giant who lost all his strength when he did not touch the ground. Thus spoke the chairman. Volume one, page one. It was Comrade Stalin who said that. Oh, yes, you still admire that strange animal. Yes, we do. Commodore, do you think any sane man would walk into China with a loaded bomb screwed into his head? No, certainly not. 
unless he hadn't been told? Would you tell him? Heavens no. A good doctor is an idealist. When his head blows off, he's going to scream, un-American. Benson, I'm not being pompous, just stating a fact when I say that we are presently engaged with the chief enemy of the Western world. So nothing is fair. Neither they nor us. And Hathaway's in the middle. If they uncover him, or kill him, or torture him, this whole installation is obsolete. Not to speak of our intelligence in China, our shaky love affair with the Kremlin, which we'd rather not publicize. All riding in one man's head. Sure, I wish we had a fail-safe device in Hathaway's stubborn skull. Quick, powerful, fatal. And a highly skilled technical officer like yourself would have no compunction about using it. Isn't that an awful lot of reasoning, General, for an explosive device that does not exist? It's very kind of you to come. Would you like some tea? Yes, thank you, but... Please go on with your game. No, it's time to quit. I'm being beaten. He's the champion of China and only 22 years of age. But Dr. Hathaway, I believe, will give me an easy victory. <laughs> you want permission to see Professor Soon? Well, that's why I've come to China, yes. Professor Sung is quite far away. However, transportation possibly can be arranged if we can manage to be frank with one another. I regard this as extremely important. Well, Dr. Hathaway, sir, you've been in our country how long? Oh, about 20 hours, that's all. And do you like China? Please help us. First impressions are very accurate. Just suppose you were the chairman and I the American scientist. Now tell me, what would you do? What thoughts would you correct? Well, I'd start with that book, the little red book. I'd buy back every copy and use the paper to wrap fish. In my own opinion, the chairman's book is only a form of daily exercise to help people to think, to reason, and therefore to change their lives for the better. Well, it might, except they don't read it, they recite it. Might as well be Greek. They use it as a form of magic. You, as chairman, should understand. The peasant masses work with their hands. They need something to grasp to lift themselves up. They've lived so long like animals. Now they must leap. And in one generation, from the 10th century to the 21st. And this is not done without noise, blood, confusion, and a certain amount of, yes, magic. Mr. Chairman, you know, of course, how many have given their flesh and blood here, on the soil of China, since the start of our movement. More than 25 million. Why? Why this sacrifice? Because there was no choice. The masses could no longer live in the old way. Their suffering was like a mountain, which you as chairman have carried on your back for so many years. Well, in that case, why should I, as chairman, go on spilling blood? Yes, I must agree with you. We Americans are strange children. We've forgotten the real stink of human blood, our own American revolution, our own civil war when we had to arm slaves in order to win. Yes, murder is as necessary to the slave as water. Nevertheless, no slave invented the gun. No, nor the hydrogen bomb either. So therefore the slave must go to you, Mr. Chairman, to the Chinese. China will teach the slave three lessons. First, to study. Second, to study how to kill. Third, to kill. And Mr. Chairman, when the slave has raised his arm against his master and killed, and when he has killed his master's family and his master's dog and his master's pig, then and only then the slave can stand up and declare himself a free man. You, as chairman, must admit this is true. No, I don't. Then you've resigned your bloody job. You bet, because I'd rather die than kill. Poor Dr. Hathaway. You are a relic of a past that never existed. Look at the history of the human race. 
One life is nothing, nothing, for all our foolish tears. Well, in my opinion, one life is everything, and human tears must be counted one by one. You are hopeless. Well, it's only too easy to kill. One little iron pellet, and the artery is broken, the brain is smashed to jelly. Now, you have tremendous power, Mr. Chairman, but can you put together a dead man? No, he is unique, irreplaceable, whoever he is. Uh, Bushman from New Guinea, or the chairman of the Chinese People's Republic. He will never be seen again in the whole blind history of the universe. That's why a life is so precious. You agree. You must agree. No. And that is why we will win. And all you people will be thrown onto the pile of human dung we Chinese keep for the fields. With all due respect, Dr. Hathaway. Huh. It may shock you to learn that I've just had another brilliant idea. I believe it. Supposing it were true that there is just a little teeny weeny bomb in Hathaway's head. Which there isn't. Which there isn't. But supposing there were, we could... Uh, two birds with one stone. To be frank, Dr. Hathaway, we've been rather worried about you. Are you really the Dr. Hathaway you say you are? Mr. Yin, check your photographs and your fingerprints. You should be happy to know you are quite authentic. Therefore, the second question arose. Why does a Nobel Prize winner wish to come to China? Merely to see Professor Sung? No, certainly not. And we know that you know and vice versa. So, let us put it on the table. There's a rumor that China has developed a most miraculous enzyme. Yes, we have the enzyme. Truly we do, but in very small quantities. It is the same situation as insulin. As you know, the medicine for diabetics. Once, I'm told, the inner organs of a thousand animals could be processed. But now, insulin can be made out of simple materials. Sir, a suggestion has been made to me which I feel obliged to pass on to you. That we are in a position to eliminate the chairman. Therefore, it is cheap and plentiful. The same must be done for this enzyme, because we need tons. And I am told you will know how to do it. Am I correct? We've asked Mr. Yin. He's compiled a big, fat portfolio on me, I'm sure. Unfortunately, sir, this is not a technical decision, but a political one. It should be made in consultation between our two governments, and possibly the third. I'll talk to our colleagues. Wait right there. Get back to you in three minutes. But Dr. Hathaway is more than a great scientist. His record shows that he's also a thoughtful and deeply compassionate person. Therefore, I'm sure he knows that the world is exploding. In 25 years, the Earth will endure the feet of some six billion people. People want children. Therefore, all our plans, the future of China itself depends on Dr. Hathaway. Therefore, I'm glad he has decided to help us. I've made no such decision. Then we must very patiently persuade you. Well, I'm afraid that might be a pretty tough job. Oh, you can toss me into solitary, feed me on rice, water, and straw, distort my chemistry until I'll get up in front of a microphone and freely confess that I shot Abe Lincoln. But you cannot make me do good work. Not unless I want to. It's just impossible. Please, tell me exactly what you want, Dr. Hathaway. Freedom. You are free. I am free. Mr. Yin is free. And yet none of us are free. Freedom is the recognition of necessity. Ah, yes, yours, not mine. I'm a scientist by conviction as well as by habit. I want scientific freedom. I want a positive assurance that China will not keep the enzyme to herself in order to blackmail a hungry world. If I decide to work with Professor Soon, I want your personal promise, Mr. Chairman, that this crime will never happen. I want a document that will let me leave China 
whenever I want to go with any materials, notebooks, or photographs that I may wish to take. And signed by yourself, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Why not? You still there, old boy? Sir. I just talked to our committee. Described your rather unfriendly suggestion. Your man said, and I quote, Great idea. Forget it. Institute of Molecular Biology. Ah, it doesn't look it somehow. Not much of a navigator, but aren't we quite close to the Russian border? We were here before the Russians, and we will be here after they've gone. We'll see my father soon. We must help him. He's become unreasonable. Hates the young people, the Red Guard, which is very bad for him in every way. Speak English. Is it possible there's a secret transmitter inside the pavilion? More likely it's a weather disturbance moving in from Russia. Perhaps we should look to ourselves before we blame Russia. The truth is, John, I've become half Chinese and half Western. Papa. My poor daughter. If I knew which half was which, I'd dissect it out and send it to the People's Democratic Morgue to be cremated. <laughs> Please don't say things like that, Papa. You know the Red Guard have you under surveillance. Now, oh, what's the diagnosis? Old age. And tension. Always 24 hours. And you? Are you comfortable here in China? Yes, if you can arrange to have my door shut and the soldiers removed. 
These are wartime difficulties. Uh, uh, the war of class against class. Please let me explain. The chairman has enemies. And not only your country, but inside Asia, inside China, inside Peking itself. Their enemies possibly here, in this laboratory. Now, Sung Chu, show him the problem. You're looking at one section of the enzyme. We call this chain A. Chain B, somewhat simpler. Chain C. The quinoid groups there are particularly interesting. And chain D. And this, Dr. Hathaway, is where our chief difficulty lies. We cannot find a means of attaching this to this. <laughs> I wouldn't call that difficult. It's more like impossible. And finally, there is nothing in Dr. Hathaway's belt buckle, his cufflinks, nor his watch. Nothing in his clothing, his baggage, nor his body. There is no transmitter. Then why do we get this garbage on our radar? The chairman trusts Dr. Hathaway. He sent him here. The chairman could be deceived. That's not possible. Good evening, Shelby. Things are getting a little bit tight. Sun Chu is a pretty clever scientist in her own right. She's also her father's nurse and her father's policeman. The old boy has some pretty strong ideas. If he's not careful, they'll come into head-on conflict with the Red Guard. She's wheeled him out of here for a couple of minutes. I don't have much time. The entire structure of the enzyme is not, I repeat, not available. Only in sections, pieces, problem areas, and they're all on film. And the film is shown by remote control from inside a metal projection room, which is built into the wall. Dr. Hathaway? Sun Chu, go to bed. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> sleeping? That's why I'm not sleepy anymore. Sun Chu, you'll have to forgive me, but I have to have some privacy. I can't think for the pretty woman staring into my mind 24 hours a day. You are upset. Oh, am I really? But I understand. You are so far from home. And you miss your family and your wife. It's natural. Well, I don't have a wife. Neither have I. <laughs> so you're not married? Yes, I am. Almost. Uh -huh. And do you love him? Almost? Of course. Of course. He's so far away. It's been more than five years. First Cuba, then Africa, and now I don't know where he is. How do you take it? You don't understand. At the suggestion of the chairman, we young people must learn to give our love to the masses. We'll search every inch, walls, trees, stones. That will take time. Why? We'll use our radio direction finders. Yes, but they'll have to be entirely readjusted. The interference is extremely high frequency. How long? A day? Two days?
First things first. Private message for Professor Hannah. You remember her. Transmit message as follows. K okay, baby, you were right. Kisses are the only thing that last. Oh, don't be jealous, Shelby. I miss you too. Well, listen. I'm gonna have to disappoint you, but I'm right. Nobody could memorize that enzyme except an idiot. It's too complex. It's a nitrogenase, molecular weight about 90,000. However, it is on a strip of film, and I'm going to try to get a hold of that. I've stolen the bottle of nitrohydrochloric acid. And at the right time, I may be able to cut my way through the top of the projection book. Oh, uh, if you don't hear from me again, uh, simple funeral, please. No fuss. No flowers. He's got plenty of rabros. I love him too. sort of Chinese celebration. Go away, John. Go away. You can do nothing. Nothing. Get away. Get away. Get away. If you want to help me, leave me alone, John. Get away. carry him round the village as punishment. I kept warning him this might happen. He said he was a scientist, not a political machine. Can't you see? He brought it on himself. God say, my father's usefulness as a scientist has ended. So they will no longer tolerate his disrespect for them. discovered something of great medical value. The beating eases the pain of arthritis. There is one book they forgot to burn. Selected works from the chairman. Volume one. How to persuade your friend to be your enemy. 
And my daughter gave it to me for my 68th birthday in English to prove that the masses of the world were on our side. She's right. It solves all possible problems except how to love one another. Look, sir. If I could arrange to get you out of here, legally or illegally, would your daughter stand in the way? My father will never leave China. He will never betray his country. Her father will never leave China. He will never betray his country. Lee, so Lee. You said to me once, you remember we were working at Princeton in a lab, standing at a window admiring a thunderstorm, you remember, and you said that just as weather has no nation, science has no nation, no loyalty, none except to humanity as a whole. And therefore, I suppose, the enzyme belongs to the world. And you came to China to steal it. Not for the American ruling class. Oh, no. But for the world. That's right. Yes, that's right. Not very fashionable today to think of humanity, is it? Yes, I came for the enzyme. I'll take it out of here if I can. That will never happen. Both you and I, John, will die in China. But I have a document signed by the chairman giving me free passage any time. The chairman is too great to be confined by a piece of paper. All of us in this room, we're prisoners. We're chained hand and foot to an enzyme. Thank you. 
who else? I'm in the projection booth. Very elaborate protection. For nothing. There's no film in the projector. It's been removed. Well, game's about up here anyway. I think I'll pack my laundry and come home if I can. If I can't, come and see me someday and bring money Chinese. It's over the laboratory. I'll investigate. It's moving again. Failure. When you send a civilian to do a soldier's job. You and I would do a lot worse. Three years of work. Heartbreak. No, I don't know what to do. Do you? Maybe Hathaway does. He's in the front line. We're not. Better get some sleep. Call me at the Three Crowns if you need me. not accept the new revolution. What was it? Sodium cyanide. It was so quick. There was nothing I could do. He wanted to march alongside of us, but he was too old. He had the chairman's book in his hand up to the last second of his life. He wanted you to read it. He marked it especially for you. Please take it. Please. Intellectuals tend to be subjective and individualistic, and some will drop out of the revolution at critical moments. While a few may even become enemies. It's not true. It couldn't. It's not true. Please don't go. Please. They will kill you. They will. And they'll be right? I don't know. Will you help me? How can I? The soldier. You could talk to him for just about two minutes. That's all I need. Will you do that? Will you? Call out squads one and three. Hurry! Marsha Falcao. Enjoy the Sunday! Come on, come on, 
Shall we wake up? my way back. Anything new? He's making his move. He's getting out of China. It's more than 50 kilometers to the Russian border. Suicide. Any suggestions? Yes. Do nothing. Wait for me. And keep in contact. Shut off and get back to you. Hello? Shut off. Our boy is sitting on the Russian border. Will you hotline Moscow? Get him across. Or we may have to pull the switch. We'll do what we can, General. Listen. I say, General, we'll do what we can. Moscow, be the notice. That's the idea. What was he? Mr. Svavaroni. Benson, where's Hathaway? Still heading for the border. signs are moving into the red. What are his body readings? Not good. Detail! Blood pressure erratic, up and down. Pulse rate? 150, 160, 170. General has been severely wounded, is my guess. Shall I get out the tape? What tape? The non-existent tape for the hypothetical execution. Do nothing! Nothing till I get 
get there. in three minutes. We don't have voice transmission. He's engaged in some physical effort. There are also signs of great fear and anxiety. The heart won't slow down. this me operation minotaur all lines open operation minotaur all lines open shirt here russian embassy i want general shelby urgent shirt of russian embassy general there is little moscow can do while it is still on chinese soil listen pal what do you want us to do declare war the border guard has been alerted, yes, but he's got to cross the wire before we can help him. Wire? The Chinese wire, and it carries 2,000 volts. Racing itself to death. How long does it take? Thirty two point five seconds. Run it out to thirty three.
видно по течёнку. Our patrol has spotted him. Under the wire. Looks hopeless. They're going to blow a way through for him. I can't make it. Китайцы бомбардированы. Trouble. Our mortar has hit their mines. General, we have order to save Hathaway if we can, but no bloodshed. Our last motor hit the wire. We lay smoke bombs. General Shelby, sir, I'm not getting any readout on his physiological status. A concussion may have damaged the Q-23. Well, are we going to wait? No, they'll have him by then. Start the tape. Come on, come on, let's get it done. choice. Inform you then or inform you now. If I believed one word of what you told me, Shelby, I'd go sick. Son of a bitch. Before I say goodbye to you, Shelby, there is something I'd like to tell you. Oh, come on now, Doc. Don't go sentimental. I want you to give me one reason why I should help you any longer. One. Just one. Patriotism, maybe? Just a thought. Now, look, General. I love my country just as much as you do. But there is no further obligation, as far as I can see, for me to have the same affection for you. Or for the people whom you admire, or the policies, or the disasters which your kind have brought down on the rest of us. I know. 
you see absolutely no difference between me and your friend, Mr. Yen. Uh, I don't know. The difference between the Chinese and us is that they'd have told their man the absolute truth. They'd have shown him the plastic dynamite wired to his brain. They'd have demanded that he be perfectly willing to blow himself up for the final victory to the peasant masses. But you, oh, no, no, you're too kind, too thoughtful to do anything like that to me. Might upset my fine, complex mind. Might even interfere with the mission. So you kept the switch in your hand, ready to explode my skull without hurting my feelings. But all right, fella, now wait a minute. If we told you we had a lien on your life, you wouldn't have gone. And there was literally no one else. We'd have had no way to penetrate the Chinese wall. And the little chairman would have the enzyme all to himself to dominate the world for the next terrible century. Or if it wouldn't dominate, star. Yes, I would. I'd trade your life or my life or anybody else's. Do anything. Use any deception, any weapon to get a fingernail sample of that enzyme. Well, we bet on you and we lost. In your opinion and in mine, this job was one big total bust. So in what way do you think you can help it? The professor's book. Why do you think he gave it to me? For ballast? You think I'm a fool? We've examined the book. Nothing. Nothing. Still nothing. Then let's try x-ray, high magnification. OK. We sent you to China and brought you back. I guess we can stretch our budget a little further. You see, the professor traced over these letters with lead pencil, not carbon, real lead, which x-ray cannot penetrate. With his crippled hands, it must have taken him hours and hours. Well, what the hell is it? Some kind of code? Plain language to every chemist in the world. The abbreviations for the amino acids. S-E-R, serine. T-Y-R, tyrosine. P-R-O, proline. The molecular formula. He had it all worked out. Every atom of it. And he's given it to us. Brave man. I hope I can justify it. There was a meeting this morning. This stuff has got to be the most powerful weapon at our disposal, and we intend to keep it that way. Under wraps. Are you kidding? Their decision, not mine. But I agree. Well, I don't. You intend to lock me up in your files? You were discussed, yes. I've been asked to tell you to forget that you went to China. You've been in hospital for the past three weeks, under sedation. General, you've made a big mistake. You love her with me. You should have left that bomb screwed into my head. We could have, but we didn't. I went to China and I came back. And if I'm forced to it, I'll tell my story to the press. I'm going to fight this decision, Shelby. This doesn't belong to us, or to me, or to my government, right or wrong. And not to the chairman, and certainly not to China. Not even to Professor Sung, and it cost him his life. No, it belongs, and I mean this literally, to that peasant with a wooden hole working in the mud of some godforsaken valley. It's his, not ours. Hathaway, in all frankness, I don't understand you people. I don't treat you at all well. It's all right. It's all right. It isn't all right. Everything's going to come down on my head. Headlines, phone calls in the middle of the night, obscene letters. They'll call me a Chinese agent. They don't even have to prove it. All they have to do is refuse to deny it, and I'm finished. Except that I'm not. I'm going to fight back. It'll be a rough walk, Kay. You want to stay? You want to go? Be my girl? Be with me? I'm here. 